Hi. You're on. Hey. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, I love this piece. It's like the Medusa of eyeballs. Yeah. Like, except for Medusa had snakes. This piece, this has, piece eyeballs. has eyeballs. That's a very I'm gonna show unique it to way you. of putting it. They're all little eyes. They're all little eyes, and they can see everything. Now, what the little eyes do for you is basically it's a psychic connection to what you want to know. And you can pick between the necklace or you can pick between the earrings. So Sometimes, they do not get both. On this one, no, they don't get both. Okay. Um, because it's an overload of power, that's why. Right. It would, for someone that needs to know things that doesn't have their full psychic ability to load them up with both of these. B blow them. Yeah, yeah, it just, it would, it would have the opposite effect. They wouldn't, they They'd wouldn't jammed, see anything. Jammed, yeah, like, yeah, you wouldn't see anything. And the reason I'm telling you that is because some of you will be like, well, I want the maximum power, so I'm going to buy both pieces. Don't. Because it'll cancel out. It's re it literally is too much. So you can take the necklace or you can take the earrings. And the eyes are just representative of you being allowed to see. And that's it. And you do see. You get visions. Like, the visions will come as if you're a natural psychic. You don't have control of them. You don't know when they're going to come. But a real psychic doesn't know when their visions are going to come. I don't know when my visions are going to come. Now, I can tell you that my visions come more often when it's close to that time of the month. Because what people don't realize is it's you're... Energetically like, charged. Yeah, you're... And she gets very energetically no. charged sometimes. Um, when, it's, when it's 10 days before that time of the month, I have so much psychic ability kicking in that it's insane it doesn't mean i don't have it the rest of the time because i do but it comes and it goes so what i have to use for me is what's called a control piece i've never offered control pieces on the website ever because i've never had anybody come to me and say i'm a real psychic i have visions but i want to control them no one's ever done that so there's not a need for them most people are coming because they want to have a psychic ability or they want to be able to increase maybe they have slight powers and they want to be able to increase it nobody's ever like yeah i'm a full-blown psychic i get psychic visions but i can't control them because in real life in reality a real psychic cannot control psychic visions unless you have what's called a very rare control piece and i keep them for myself should i lose one should i break one i have them because Without that, I still have all my psychic visions, but they're going to come when they want to come and not when I want them to come. So that's why I have them. So this piece gives you psychic ability where you can have vision. So in other words, you'll see all kinds of things. Like you'll see like that bridge that collapsed. You might know about that. You might know about an airplane crash, but mainly the things you're going to know about are what is what is more important to you in your life. So It'll be more about family members, friends, lovers, relationships, business dealings, school. Everything that is your life is what you're going to have visions about. There will be the rare occasion when you might see a plane crash. But my suggestion to you, as callous as this may sound, is I've had those before. And I've said to people, you know, I need to call LaGuardia because there's going to be a crash. And people have said to me, Didi, don't do that because if you do... And, and that plane crashes, they're coming for you because they're going to want to know, how did you know? And there have been people that have gone to prison because they reported crimes before they happened. And so people thought they did it. And you guys can look that up. So you may just want to watch how you handle things. I mean, it, it sounds terrible. They're like, well, you should go to prison because you're going to save a bunch of lives. Not necessarily because they think you're crazy and they don't listen to you anyway. Like, there's a missing boy right now. He's been missing for, let's see, 15 years. And every, I guess, like, every 5, 10 years, he comes up and they'll talk about him very briefly. And I'm not going to say his name on here, but he came up, I guess, five years ago on TV and they were talking about him again. The father wants nothing to do with psychics at all. The father and mother have divorced. Um, they're no longer together after the, the son went missing. He doesn't want anything to do with psychics because 
he had fake psychics con contact him. When you have so many fake psychics contacting you, yeah. you get discouraged. And in your mind, as a person who's not psychic, you're like, it's all bullshit. And that's a damn shame because I saw who took this kid. I reported it to the police because they actually tried to kidnap me from the super fresh <laughs> parking lot. No, no, I'm dead I serious. Know. I remember the story. No, like I'm for real. I went, um, I started getting these phone calls from this guy and that was, and it was a guy pretending to be a woman. And, and they did this like funny voice on the phone, but like not funny where you would laugh, but where you would know, Hey, this is a woman, you know, like this is, they're saying they're a woman, but you knew it was a guy. And they, for the first phone call was, I saw your 67 Camaro. Cause I have a 67 done up Camaro. Like it's badass. And they're like, Oh, I like that car. Is that car for sale? Um, and I'm like, where did you see the car at? Oh, well you live at, you know, blah, blah, Spruce Road. Okay. Huh? Well, that's interesting because I don't have a first sale sign on it. How did you get my number? Hmm. And they're like, well, I saw the car and blah, blah. And I said, well, the car's not for sale. Because the car's never going to be for sale. So then two or three days later, I get another call. And it's this, it's a female voice. The first call was a guy's voice. The second call was the guy pretending to be a woman saying that he was a photographer. And he wanted me to come over by his house, which was by the fire hall next to the fire station in Ocean City, New Jersey. And that he wanted me to help him by me taking pictures of him for these clothes or jewelry or whatever he wanted to model. And I'm like, look, I, you know, I got business. I, I got things I gotta do. I really can't do that. And then the third phone call was a guy saying he was a psychiatrist who wanted to take a poll. He had a questionnaire and would I mind answering it? And the questions started off okay. And then they went to like all these sexual perverted questions. But every time a phone call was coming in, and there was like about 10, 20 phone calls, there would be, and I, I know this sounds so cliche, but there was a white van sitting outside of my house. I had a big bay windows in the kitchen. And this was just before like 9-11 happened. And, or, uh, no, or that, no, actually, I'm sorry. No, that, no, it wasn't, it wasn't just before 9-11. It was like long before 9-11. So this white, white van would be sitting outside of my house. And then one day I go with Sarah and Larry, um, to play the pumpkin head to the super fresh in ocean city, which is, I don't think the super fresh is any, is no, any, no longer there, but I went in and I'm in the soda aisle because she wanted me to pick her up red birch beer. So I'm looking at the soda and this guy comes up to me and he says to me, the store brand is just as good as the name brand. And I said, yeah, yeah. And it's sometimes cheaper. I took. I walked probably two feet away and realized this was the guy calling me on the phone. That's creepy. So I told Deflated Pumpkin Head Private Part Scratcher, I said, hey, this is the guy calling me on the phone. So I got in line to pay for the stuff. Well, this guy knew I was going on. He got in front of me and he was a white guy. And then this black guy got behind me and they were sig signaling each other. And then he paid for stuff and he ran out and he opened up the back doors in the van and then the black guy came from behind me and they went to shove me in the van, but I got away. I wouldn't be here today. Here's the thing. The kid that went missing, went missing when the, <laughs> I would, the we're not laughing at this. We're laughing at something totally else. Um, the kid that went missing, he went missing when the, that fire department was in his neighborhood. And psychically I had a vision of the firehouse and a house next to it. These people tried to kidnap me why wouldn't they try to kidnap him? And I know it doesn't sound like, oh, well, how can you go from that to the next? But here's the thing. Um, before the kid was taken, this same white van was shown, had been seen around in his neighborhood at the baseball field. The same white van was seen at the time he was missing. The only thing left behind was a red shoe in his backyard. That's creepy. But when I told them about it, when I told the prosecutor about it, I told the police, I said, look, you can check the police report. There's a police report of this happening. It's that white van you guys described. It's one white guy and a black guy. I'm telling you, they never bothered to check it out. When they put it back on TV just a few years ago, I called them again and told them, look, I called before, but they, they, they never bothered. I remember you making that phone call. Yeah, they, they, they never bothered because they didn't care. So somewhere out there, they keep thinking it's a guy in Philly who kidnapped and probably killed this guy, this kid, 
He's never been found, no body, no trace, no nothing. But I can tell you people, they don't follow up on every lead either. So you need to keep your eyes on your kids and don't let them run through stores and restaurants like nut jobs. Because I was just at Pegasus last week and I was just telling you this today. A two year old is wandering the friggin' parking lot. There is no one around. No one. I could have picked because I work late. I could have picked this two year old up, put it in my car and drove away. And no one's ever gonna know. It's crazy. And the father's just sitting inside the restaurant in the back. He don't even know his two year old's car. It's like really? <laughs> so I picked the kid up, I take it in, and I said, Who does this belong to? Does somebody wanna claim it? Who does this belong to? I, I know, I mean come on, have some common sense. Because if you're not wealthy, if you're not rich, they're not going to be having you on TV like they do. What's her name? Oh, uh, Tiblets. Yeah. What's her name? Tibbles. I forget. How can we forget? She's on the news every five minutes that she's missing. Which one? The one that's missing. The girl. Oh, I don't know that. Is her name Molly? I don't know. I don't know her name. But either way, she's on the TV every five, ten minutes. You know, but there's big reward money out for her. And apparently, you know, the family's wealthy. If you're not wealthy and your kid goes missing, they ain't looking for them. Right. So keep your eyes on them. It's simple. Be a parent. Anyway, life lesson. <laughs> These give you visions. <laughs> simple. Be a parent. Yeah, very simple. Be a parent. Well, there, there they are. They have eyeballs on them. They give you psychic vision. And it's real psychic vision. Real stuff. The real deal. So you can't control them, but they come. And we're out of here. Bye.